Praise be Jesus and Mary. Now and forever. Our Lord, our Lord say it today in the gospel, if you keep my commandments, then you will love me and I will remain with you. And we've been reflecting on the commandments for the past few weeks. We're going to continue our reflection on those today. We're going to continue reflecting on this fourth commandment, which is honor your father and mother. Last time we talked about this, we talked about how children are to honor their parents. Today we're going to turn the tables and speak on parents' duties towards their children. Parents are to essentially provide, educate, and love their children. See if we can understand maybe how those are woven together. First, parents are providers and they're educators. They have a duty to provide for their children and also to educate them specifically regarding their moral and their spiritual formation. The Catechism at paragraph 2221 says, the right and duty of parents to educate their children are primordial and inalienable, unquote. So when the state or school system begins to strip parents of their rights to educate their children and begins teaching their children immoral and controversial things, often without the parents' consent, actually violating the fourth commandment. They're dishonoring parents, children, and even themselves, for that matter. Education comes from the Latin word educare. It means to lead or to bring out of something. Ducere in Latin means to lead. Ed or ex means out of. So we can think of maybe Moses leading God's people out from their slavery in Egypt. It was actually a form of education in a certain sense, in more ways than one, right? The Israelites had a lot to learn on that trip. Parents are meant to lead their children out of the state of ignorance, of helplessness that they're born in, to lead them out of their inclinations to sin and selfishness, to actually bring them out of spiritual bondage through baptism, through having them frequent the sacraments as they grow up, to lead them or teach them how to be responsible, how to interact with others. So basically education isn't just intellectual formation. It isn't just from the neck up, right? Just like believing in God isn't just from the neck up, right? If you truly believe in God, that means that your thinking and your choices in life will reflect that belief. Education means leading, leading your children out of darkness into light. So instructing them on how to be good, how to be responsible, how to be mature, and that can't all be delegated to the school or to someone else. Really, the parents have to lead, ducere in Latin, to lead. The parents have to be the ones to do that. Regarding one of those things we just mentioned, canon law says in Canon 867 that parents must have their children baptized shortly after they're born. So to neglect to do that without a valid reason would be a serious sin. You know, there's a guarantee that baptized children go to heaven if they die. There's no guarantee that unbaptized children go there if they die. Nowadays, there's a lot of speculation along those lines, and there's hope as well, but there's no guarantee. So in those cases, it is better to err on the side of caution, right? Better to pray for them than to presume on their salvation. But even more importantly, we have to have our children baptized. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them. Matthew 19, 14, he wants them to be baptized, right? And if parents are thinking, well, we want to wait till Johnny gets older so that he can decide if he wants to be a Catholic or not. We don't want to force this on him. If they're thinking in that way, then there's something seriously wrong with their spiritual walk with God. Right? Catholics who are free thinkers like that are not living their faith. It's a big problem. Very importantly, paragraph 2223, the Catechism says, parents should teach their children to subordinate the material and instinctual dimensions to interior and spiritual ones, unquote. So instincts, passions, they all need to be educated. They need to be controlled by reason and by the truths of the faith. Parents need to instruct the children in these things. Plus, they actually need to teach them that material things are not to be prioritized in life. Right? Possessions and things are not more important than people 
and spiritual realities, especially living in God's grace. So living in God's grace has to be a number one priority, and parents need to lead by example. Catechism says at paragraph 22, 23, parents have a grave responsibility to give good example to their children. So example is a big part of education because with children more is caught than taught, as they say. That same paragraph 22, 23 says that parents bear witness to their responsibility to educate their children first by creating a home where tenderness, forgiveness, respect, Fidelity and disinterested service are the rule. The home is well suited for education in the virtues, says the Catechism. So we need to have a loving atmosphere in the home which reflects the heart of our Lord, which reflects the heart of Our Lady as well. So hardness of heart, unforgiveness, disrespect, infidelity, selfish, self-centered living, they're all contrary to how God wants the home to be. Paragraph 2222 says that parents must regard their children as children of God and respect them as human persons, unquote. So first and foremost, remember your child belongs to God, right? They're God's first. They're not your property, okay? Also, shouldn't, we shouldn't have unhealthy attachments or dependence on our children as well. So smothering them instead of mothering them. For example, and you also have to respect them as human beings and treat them as such, too. So physically, psychologically, spiritually, or emotionally mistreating your children is a sin against the fourth commandment. The gravity of the sin depends on how badly we've mistreated them. Plus, we also have to keep in mind children are not a right, right? Children are actually a gift. They're not a right. No one has a right to have a child. It's like no one has a right to kill a child. Okay, if you have trouble conceiving, parents do have trouble at times, we should present our trouble to the Lord and look into legitimate ways to conceive or possibly having children through adoption. But remember that children are a gift. And remember we need to pray always, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. That can be a very hard prayer to pray at times, but it's actually very beautiful way to live when we live abandoned to God's will. Paragraph 22, 24 of the Catechism says that parents should teach their children to avoid the compromising and degrading influences which threaten human societies, unquote. So there are so many applications for that, right? From how we dress to how we think to what type of work we do, what type of entertainment we take in. Parents have to be vigilant about these things. We're still living in the wake of the sexual revolution. Our culture is a corrupting force. It's a force more for evil than for good nowadays, unfortunately. So we need to teach our children to be wise of the ways of the world and also wise regarding the lies of the world as well. Paragraph 2226 of the Catechism says that parents have the mission to teach their children to pray and to discover their vocation as children of God, unquote. So it's your job to pray for your children, but also to pray with them as well. I remember once when I was little, maybe four or five years old, I was in my grandmother's room once, sitting on her bed, and my uncle, a few years older than me, came in, and uh, he was all excited because he just learned how to pray the rosary. Probably the nuns at school taught him how to pray it. So he jumped on the bed, and he started praying the rosary, and. Uh, I looked at my grandmother and she just kind of had a blank stare on her face. She didn't really know how to respond to it. And I remember, I think even at that time, thinking how sad that is. You know, she's never actually taught her children to pray. Why does she never teach them to pray? Well, you don't, can't give what you don't have, right? So if you don't grow up with your own parents teaching you how to pray, a lot of times you don't even know how to pass that on to your children. So it's important for us to teach our children how to pray and to pray with them. That'll go a long way if we learn to do that. Paragraph 22, 27 of the Catechism says that children can contribute to the growth in holiness of their parents, unquote. I think that's pretty obvious, right? Children are saint makers, so you don't need to do a lot of commentary on that one. Paragraph 2230 says that when children become adults, they have the right and the duty to choose their profession and state of life. 
Parents should be careful not to exert pressure on their children, either in the choice of a profession or in that of a spouse. And this necessary restraint does not prevent parents from giving their children judicious advice, particularly when they are planning to start a family, unquote. So parents shouldn't dictate to their children what the children are to do in life. Where the child should be allowed to have the freedom to embrace the life that God is actually calling him or her to embrace. They also have the, have the freedom to make mistakes as well, too. So it's certainly better to learn from other people's mistakes, but some of us, a lot of us, like the prodigal son, we've got to make those mistakes first before we actually learn anything. It's a good humbling experience for some of us. The Catechism at paragraph 2232 says that family ties are important but not absolute. The first vocation of the Christian is to follow Jesus. So if Jesus is calling your child to be a religious or to the priesthood, don't get in the way of that. We want to be careful about that. If we try to get in the way of that, we may be finding ourselves fighting against God. As Gamaliel said to the Sanhedrin in Acts chapter 5, right? We don't want to do that. We don't want to fight God. Paragraph 2233 says parents should welcome and respect with joy and thanksgiving the Lord's call to one of their children to follow him in virginity for the sake of the kingdom in the consecrated life or the priestly ministry, unquote. So we should rejoice, not rebel, if God's calling one of our children to serve him. It might require us to die to our own plans and our own desires for our children, but that's actually a good thing. The more we die to our own wills, the more Jesus can live and work in us, which becomes a very beautiful thing, actually. So lastly, just remember that the Lord will give you the grace to be a good parent if you ask him. And he'll also make up for whatever mistakes we make if we ask him to do that as well, right? God can bring good even out of the worst parenting situations or with children who even grew up with no parents. But he wants us to pray and intercede for parents who aren't or weren't the best of parents and for children who maybe aren't or weren't the best of children or who have been scarred because of their upbringing. We need to pray for them. The Lord can heal all wounds. That's one of his favorite specialties. So let's ask Our Lady for the grace to parent with the wisdom and the graciousness that she and St. Joseph had in parenting the Son of God. Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. Amen.